Gentlemen, welcome. Today, an overview of the M600 Remote Controller Channel Expansion Kit. Now, this kit will work for anything that uses DJI's Lightbridge 2 system, not just the M600, which is what I'm going to be showing you today. So when you order this kit, what you get is this nice alloy rail here that has uh, four control knobs and four switches. You also get this uh, backpack here that replaces the one that it, uh, comes on the Lightbridge 2 radio. You get some instructions and you get like a, a little tool to remove the SDI port and anything. Now I'm not going to bore you with the installation. Uh, it does come with the instructions that take you through step by step. It's very very simple. Just follow those. Be careful with your ribbon cables. Um, but it's four screws, three ribbon cables, a couple other screws. Swap the, the uh, backpacks and you, you'll be good to go. Now on the rail itself um, like I said, four knobs, four switches. The outer knobs are detented, so they kind of click around. The inner knobs are smooth. All right, it's mirrored over here. The outer switch is a three position. The inner switch, those are momentary. Um, one thing about the backpack for the expansion kit, it is missing the SDI port, you'll notice. Um, there's just no room for it, I guess. So if you want to use this expansion kit, you are going to lose the uh, SDI video out. Uh, not a big deal to me, but to some people that might be uh, important. Uh, otherwise, you have your normal uh, USB out. Uh, this is a CAN connection for the actual signal and power that uh, power the expansion kit. And then you have micro USB and uh, HDMI, so you still do have an HDMI output. <clears throat> so that's uh, you know a brief overview of the actual physical layout of it. It also has this uh, LED that indicates uh, operation. This will be red at power on and uh, after a few seconds it'll go green. Um, I guess if it stayed red you, you, you'd you be able to know that you had some sort of communication fault. Alright, so what we're actually going to talk about mostly here is uh, how to configure this using Assistant 2 when you're using N3 or A3 uh, flight controller. So bear with me here, I'm going to go handheld on camera I'm using N3, and I'm going to just demonstrate a quick uh, operation of a uh, servo-based device. Uh, so that's the real point of the channel expansion kit, is to allow you to operate things that previously you couldn't with Lightbridge 2 Radio because you don't have any you know, switches to work with. Uh, so that's what the channel expansion kit lets you do. So what I have here is a servo-based, um, or servo-operated servo cargo hook. Uh, I have it plugged into the F4 port here on my N3. Now one important thing to notice uh, or to take note of is that the N3 and probably the A3, I haven't tried it myself, but uh, it will not provide voltage to a device plugged into it. Um, so all it's going to do is give you signal. So what I have here just rigged up for purposes of demonstration is an you know, external LiPo with a UBEC that's going to feed 5 volts to this. And then what I actually have plugged into the N3 is just the ground end signal, and I'm using a Wiley just to, to show it operating. Obviously, I would clean that up if I was actually setting it up, but just so you can see it working. So once you have your channel expansion kit installed on your radio, and you go ahead and plug your device, whatever you want to operate, um, camera gimbal, servo, lights, whatever you want to control with the switch from the expansion kit into your actual uh, aircraft, what you're going to do is connect your flight controller to N3, or excuse me, to uh, Assistant 2. And you're going to come down here to uh, Tools. And you're going to go up to Function Channel. And then you're going to go ahead and map, map it out. So, like I said, I have that cargo hook uh, plugged into the F4 port right here. So I'll go ahead and map it to whatever uh, control I want to operate it with. Now... You'll see it says D1 through 8. Don't get confused here, just, just stick with me. All right, D1 is actually S1, and D2 is S2, and D3 is S3, and, and so forth down the line. So I want to operate that cargo hook with a momentary switch, so I'm going to use S4, because that makes sense to me. Um, so, you know, don't think that if you plug something into say F port 3, it has to be operated with switch 3. That, that's not the way it works. You just have to map it to whatever you want. 
and you, you know you'll figure it out real quick once you start messing with it so <clears throat> I have F4 mapped to D4 which is S4 switch 4 and then this box will pop up here and we can control a few things we can control the output frequency I have that set to 50 which is normal for a you know standard servo and then spraying frequency up here now spraying frequency is just think of it like endpoints okay so say I put this way out of whack like way up there what's gonna happen to my servo is that all right it's gonna go beyond you know to too far of travel so that's what you're gonna to use to adjust your your servo travel as I slide that slider down it moves back into range all right so again think of this right here as your endpoints, your channel travel. So you're going to set that to whatever you know is appropriate for your device. And then you can also reverse the channel, which is a nice feature. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. And you can do that uh, for as many devices as you want. So this is really a, a handy little feature. You know, if you want to run a third-party gimbal, um, you'll be able to control it with those knobs. Um, you know, any sort of device, lights, anything servo-operated. Um, one real negative of the thing is the aesthetic, or not the aesthetics, but the ergonomics are really bad. I mean, you, your hand is here, and it's just going to be kind of a pain. You're definitely taking your hand off the sticks to operate any of those switches. Um, so that, that, that's a definite drawback. But otherwise, uh, what you lose is the SDI port, um, but you, you gain a lot of control for, you know, other devices that previously you wouldn't, um, have been able to control with Lightbridge 2. So uh, definitely a good step in the right direction for DJI. And uh, I've tested it with a few devices now. And all of them have worked as they should. Uh, so it's looking good. Uh, if you have any other questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching.